We've never seen this amount of change ever. And I think another very important phenomenon here is the convergence between and among these technology. On season three of The Switch, we're really excited to co-host with Kathy Wood, founder, CEO, and chief investment officer of ARK Invest. We're going to discuss the case for disruptive innovation. So watch us as we dive into why now for disruptive innovation. So Kathy, innovation has always been with us, but today, are we at a unique part in human development? Uh, we think so. Uh, we think uh, that the five innovation platforms evolving at the same time, this has never happened before. The closest we've come to this was in the early 1900s when there were three platforms, but five platforms evolving with 14 underlying technologies all of which are gaining traction and are going to deliver exponential growth. Uh, we've never seen this amount of change ever. And I think another very important phenomenon here is the convergence between and among these technologies. So you have one S-curve feeding another S-curve feeding another S-curve, and each curve is exponential. So the combination is pretty explosive. So Kathy, you've been a bit of a student of innovation for as long as I've known you. Can you talk to us a little bit about when you first got really excited about it and when you realized that this was an investment thesis? Well, uh, my interest in innovation stems to my father, who uh, he came to this country from Ireland at the dawn of the electronic age, and he became an expert in radar systems in the American Air Force. So he inspired me uh, about the possibilities uh, coming out of the electronic age. But in terms of uh, setting up a company to focus uh, exclusively uh, on disruptive innovation, that really occurred to me in uh, 2012. Uh, and it, it occurred suddenly, I wasn't even thinking about work when it just came to me, look, there's so much disruption taking place in the world. Uh, why don't you do two things? Why don't you focus your own company on it? And why don't you disrupt the financial world itself by giving your research away so that people can learn about it. Uh, so that really happened in 2012. Uh, we started the company in 2014. Kathy, when you look back on 2020 and the global pandemic, how has that changed your perspective on innovation? It, has it grown even that much more? Well, I think what's happened is the creative destruction that is the other side of disruptive innovation is happening much faster than otherwise would have been the case. Normally, the reason innovation doesn't take off as quickly as many people expect is, uh, is inertia. That's the primary reason. Uh, well, the coronavirus crisis created a huge number of problems. Innovation solves problems. Consumers and businesses were afraid. They're willing to change the way they do things, or we, I'll include myself in that, are willing to change the way we do things when we are scared, frightened. Uh, we're trying to lower costs, increase productivity, become more creative, uh, become more efficient. And that's what innovation does. Getting back to history for a second, you know, we you talk all the way back to the steam engine when you talk about innovation, and there are these pockets where you get these explosions of innovation and these sort of cascading innovations together. Are there any examples that you think are, are really comparable to where we are now in terms of that kind of acceleration from an event like 2020? Sure. Well, it's very interesting. The Spanish flu of uh, 1918, uh, that was around the time that uh, telephone, electricity, and the automobile, started by the internal combustion engine, of course, 
they were all starting to evolve uh, and they were making life better, cheaper, faster. Uh, but I've read a lot of stories about uh, the resistance to this kind of innovation uh, before to, uh, 1918. And then what do you know? After 1918, uh, you've got the explosive changes associated with, with all of them. I think the difference between that time and today is number one, the number of platforms, five instead of three, uh, the number of underlying technologies, 14 really, as opposed to really three, three or four, uh, and uh, the convergence between and among these technologies, which is much more powerful this time. Yeah, and, and fast forward to today, Kathy, as all of us are filling our days with Zoom calls, where just two years ago, it was more important to jump on a plane or jump in a car and go see somebody. Do you feel that we're going to continue to benefit from this forced technology improvement that we've all seen individually? Yes, I mean, think about the transformation of work. Uh, we are going uh, into a hybrid work environment. Uh, certainly, ARC is doing that. Uh, and I think it will be very important for uh, talent retention and, uh, and talent attraction to have a hybrid uh, work place or working style. Uh, so I think that's changed and, and improved our quality of life. I know I commuted uh, four hours a day, door to door, uh, and I'm not doing that anymore, and I'm getting more sleep. My health has improved. So I think for a lot of us, uh, the, the, the changes are permanent, and they're going to allow for a much more enjoyable work life. And work is only one thing that has changed. I, I know you miss that airline food just like I do as well, I'm sure. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now, not needing to travel as much is going to be huge because we are global. ARC is global in its reach. And uh, I remember going to Australia four times in one year uh, a, a, as part of an around the world trip on, on a few of those. So, you know, this is certainly adding to my productivity and I think our firm's productivity. Well, Kathy, this has been excellent. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Switch.